Over the last 12 months, we've tested an awful lot of bikes here on Road CC, and this is the point where we decide on um, which ones are our bikes of the year. So I'm joined here at the cafe table <laughs> by our technical editors, Matt Brett and Dave Arthur, and we're going to run down our top 11 bikes of the year. So, 11 bikes? Yeah, 11. We're thinking outside the box this year. Everyone's gone. Everyone's going 11 speed, and so have we. Road CC Bikes of the Year 2013. Here are the contenders. 11. Sabbath September. The Sabbath is a sweet handling, well honed Titanium Audax bike. If you're after the ultimate all rounder, this could be the bike for you. Pinnacle R Coast 3. One of two crosser commuters to make our bike of the year list, the R Coast is a brilliant all rounder, happy on the road and on the trail. Where it really scores is in delivering great value for money. Genesis Quite Affair. Genesis have made their reputation with versatile all round bikes built for British conditions, and the Quad de Fur crosser delivers once again. And it's got the bonus of being a great ride too. Eight, Roseon RS3000. A top value aluminium frame German speed machine that earns its place with a combination of a great ride and a fantastic parts package. Seven, BMC Team Machine SLR01. Our superbike of the year is simply hands down one of the best riding race bikes of 2013. Six, Oisa Calobra 003. Named after the famous climb in Mallorca, the Alois Sacalobra delivers in spades when it comes to handling and value for money, and it puts a lot of carbon bikes to shame. 5. Canyon Ultimate CF SLX 9.0 Our 2011 Bike of the Year got lighter, stiffer and even better in 2013. The lightest bike we've tested this year and far and away the best value World Tour team bike you can buy. 4. Rally Militus It's a great race ready bike at a great price. One of the best handling frames we've tested this year. It's a sub 900 gram frame, full carbon construction, huge oversized, really stiff. Yeah. Transfer of power really efficiently. But it's also comfortable as well. Yeah. And it's got to be said, I mean, it's not on the list because, you know, sentiment hasn't won its place on the list. It's won its place on the list because of its performance handling and, be and because of its price. Stu absolutely yeah. loved it. Didn't he did he? really yeah. love it, yeah. And it's a very striking looking bike too as you can see in, a, in its black and yellow colourway. But a great bike for the money and a real return to form from Rally. Three, Boardman Road Sport. Classy ride, value for money build and versatility make the Road Sport the perfect first road bike. Although it's a 500 pound bike, it doesn't ride like a 500 pound bike. It rides as it, like, a, like a full on road bike, but just at a cheaper price point. So you get a decent aluminium double butted frame, double pass welds very neatly done. Uh, you get a sporty geometry, but it's still a kind of geometry that you can ride fast. It's not like you sit up and beg. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good, efficient geometry. And the, the mix of components is pretty good. You get Shimano Sora 2300 uh, group set. And um, the bike's more than capable of taking you fast on a big ride at the weekend, do a sportive or whatever. You can whack some mud guards and a rack on there and it will do the job for commuting really uh, efficiently in the week too. So for a, somebody who, who's spending 500 quid, who needs a bike to do everything, this is the bike, this is the bike for them. If they want a road bike and a bike, it's, and, but it's also got to be their ride to work bike. It's a brilliant all rounder. It, it, you yeah. know, if you just want one bike that can do everything, but you don't want to spend too much cash and this is definitely in really good shape. Two, 
Cannondale Synapse Carbon 3 Ultegra. Our runner up by a very close margin, the Synapse packs in a raft of cutting edge technology to deliver a fast and comfortable ride. At this price, it delivers the best performance for a whole lot of riders. Is it Synapse or Synapse? Good question there. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> is it Synapse or Synapse? Oh, I you say, say synapse. synapse, I say Synapse. It's muscles, isn't it? Synapse, Synapse. <laughs> anyway, it's a really good bike. The Synapse wins, carbon Altegra 3 version wins, because it delivers performance, delivers comfort without compromise. It's capable of delivering that to more people simply because it comes in at 2,300 quid. And is it French starts at 1,700, rises to 7,000 apparently. Yeah, there you go. We've got the mid price 2,500. Cannondale Synapse Carbon 3 Altegra, they've got two versions of the bike. So we tested the regular non high modulus carbon version. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there is a high modulus carbon version. Both share the same key features such as the 25.4 millimeter seat post, yeah. uh, the, the shaping of the seat stays. I mean, they're the same the frame, out of the same mould, just with different carbon, yeah. just different grade of carbon. Yeah. Um, I suppose the other thing to say about the Cannondale is a part of the shape of the tubes play more of a part in how the Synapse rides. Yeah, the Cannondale would call it, well, call it Save Plus, yeah. which is a combination of three micro suspension. Yeah, systems. systems. There's a carbon layout, the skinny seat post, and the shaping of the, the tube. The radical shaping around the bottom Which, bracket, it's got to be said. I mean, some people, it's a like or loathe. I have met some a, people who don't like it, but looker. I think it looks really cool. Yeah. But those, those three tech features combine great. One of the most comfortable bikes. Out oh, there. it's super comfortable. Without sacrificing yeah. stiffness. Yes. Who should but buy this bike? This bike appeals to uh, anyone who wants to ride fast yeah. in comfort. A long it's, way. It's a, it's a big release of Candel, this new bike, it totally revamped it. Yeah. And in doing so, they made it 95% as good as the Evo, mm. but with much more comfort. In terms of performance, yeah. yeah. So, unless you really care about racing and the slam front ends, this is a bike more people should be riding. Our bike of the year, 2013. Infinito CV. Bianchi delivers the best combination of technology, ride performance, handling and style of any of the bikes we've tested this year. An awesome machine that sets a new benchmark in terms of comfort and performance. So this is one of the few, if possibly the only bike in our top 11 that all three of us have ridden this year. Matt, Matt and I rode it at the launch in, in Lille uh, over the cobbles at Roubaix. Uh, Matt famously doing a, his no hands on Carrefour. I rode it in uh, Tuscany and Dave actually tested it. It's fair to say it's the bike that probably impressed us, the three of us, the most this year. What stood out for it particularly for you? It was the, the comfort yeah. for me. The comfort but without sacrificing the performance. Yeah. So when you want to get a bit feisty, yeah. it still delivers. Yeah. It's all, it's everything you want from a race bike, but with some of this stiffness and harshness dialed out. Yeah. And it's a bike you could race on. I mean, it's got to be said, the bike, the version we tested, retailed at more or less seven grand, wasn't seven it? Grand, it was, but yeah. a large chunk, but that, a large chunk wheels, of that was the wheels, upgrade. though. The countervail vibration cancelling composite technology is what it's all about. Yeah. The, the frame is... Everything about the frame is based on damping out the vibration in the ride. And it's kind of got all the hallmarks of something that makes you 
suspicious in yeah. that you can't see it. Yeah. It's a marketing term. You kind of it makes you wonder whether it's all hot air until you ride it and you realise it actually yeah. does work. Yeah, yeah, no, it really does work. It's a really impressive bike to ride. I mean, it was my favourite bike uh, of, of the year of, the, of all the bikes. It's probably the, the, the nicest bike that I've ridden ever. I should think. I had some really great rides on it. So this is all sounding about a bit downbeat. Well, that's probably because we spent so long arguing about what bike's going to be number one and what bike's going to be number two. And we all really enjoyed riding the Bianca. It's a bike that suits somebody like me. I'm not a, um, a racer, but I do like to ride fast. I, I like a reasonably aggressive position, but not super aggressive, you know, but I, like to, I don't like a bike with a sort of tall head tube, but I do want a bike that I'm going to be comfortable on. The Yankee delivered that in spades, but it felt, didn't feel like, nothing about it felt compromised, it just felt fast um, and fun. All the promises about carbon layup, about what people can do with, with it, seem, people seem to be coming good on them. A lot of manufacturers are now able to make lightweight bikes and stiff bikes. They've got to add something else, bring something else to the party. Most people don't want a bike that's mega fast, that the expense is it's going to kick their ass to bits. And in the past, the way that's been delivered more often than not is by giving everyone a high position. And there isn't there's nothing wrong with that, with having a taller head tube, especially if you've got a, a bad back. But it's not as, as efficient a way of riding your bike, of getting yeah, the most. it's one solution, but I think that um, more as, as people have got to grips with the technology more, they've realised there's solutions within the materials that they, yeah. can, they can offer. I mean, it's ironic, really, that we've come back, we've gone sort of full circle to where, to, to, the, to what a lot of the Italian manufacturers, when sportive bikes first came out, some Italian manufacturers simply wouldn't, wouldn't produce them. They set their face against them and said, well, look, we already produce comfortable race bikes and the, 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 the ideal should be to produce a bike you can go fast on in comfort. Yeah, I think that's what it's all about, isn't it? The two bikes that have come out top in our, in our assessments have been ones that give you all of the performance yeah. in terms of speed uh, and uh, efficiency. Yeah. It's got to be said you can jack up the front end on the Cannondale. I mean, I'm old and inflexible, as anyone who's ever seen the Road CC yoga videos can attest, and I have no problem riding it with, you know, one spacer. I think it depends what you mean by comfort as well. Yeah. I think the sportive bikes that have been popular for the last five, ten years, yeah. they're coming in from the approach of a tall head tube yeah. to straighten the riders back up. Mm. Whereas these new endurance bikes, like the Infinito and the Synapse, uh, ratio geometry by using latest carbon yeah. fiber development to get comfort in the frame to isolate the rider more from the rough roads. So that wraps up Road CC's Bike of the Year Awards for another year. A year in which we've tested some fantastic bikes at a wide variety of price points. There is no doubt that the bikes you can buy are getting better in almost every way and that this year we've seen a step change in design when it comes to combining comfort and performance. That's been made possible by advances in carbon technology, exemplified by the bikes that dominated the pointy end of our awards categories. The Bianchi Infinito CV, the Cannondale Synapse, the BMC Team Machine and the Merida Sculptura. They've set the benchmark for next year's contenders to try and beat. We start testing now.